Hey, what's up, guys? Roby here with yet another Divi tutorial from the team here at Divi Engine. And today is another continuation of our Divi Theme Builder tutorial series. And we will be looking at helping our lost users back to a spot where they feel comfortable if they maybe mistype a URL or just get lost on your site. And of course, I'm talking about those 404 pages. And if you take a look here, we're going to be building out something that's inspired by this layout by the Elegant Themes team. I will link it in the description of this video, but here you can see what I built out in this tutorial. So definitely you're going to be learning some stuff that you can use today to make better websites. But first things first, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. That helps us be motivated to build this awesome content for you and bring you the things that you need. Comments are also very much appreciated. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, guys, so last week we stopped here where we finished building this life altering category page for your posts. Yes, I know it is not a thing of absolute beauty. Don't remind me, but it does the job and, you know, probably served us some inspiration. So why don't we go and start at the beginning? First thing we're going to need to do to build out this 404 page layout. And, we, you know, exactly like I said in the beginning here, we're not going to build out the exact thing. We're going to build out something similar is we have to start at the theme builder. Theme builder here, we're going to add a new template. You should know the drill by now. And we'll say build new template. And we'll just scroll on down. And then here on the other, you'll have two options. The 404 one is the one that we're interested in. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new template for the 404 page. Now that kind of spits this out and we'll just go ahead and build a custom body. Okay, so looking at this, I can already kind of deduce that this, this is probably a three column row, single column row, and then a two column row. So why don't we add those in there to start out our journey here? Or maybe, no, actually what I'll do today, for once I'm gonna do it in order, okay? So three column row, here we go. Um, let's add a text module to each one of these. Well, actually what we'll do is we'll style the first one and we're just going to go with a big four as it is just going to have the 404 in there. And then we're going to want to make this nice and big, right? So we're just going to go to text here. Um, we'll probably bold it out nice and ultra bold. And maybe we want to have a font. Um, that is a little, little heftier. Um, and I think Chango one, if I recall correctly, we'll add some beef. Yeah, there you go. Nice fat font. Um, and then we'll just set this to, I don't know, let's go with a uh, eight. Oh, not even close to large enough with two sixty eight. There we go. That is getting a little bit closer to what we're going to want here. Um, we going to want to go design and then maybe what we'll do also is we'll give it the, um, line height of one, because then that way it gives it enough space here at the top and the bottom. Um, we're going to give it a little bit of extra space here, um, in the spacing area, of course. And we're going to add, let's start with 50 pixels of padding at the top and the bottom. We'll see what that does. Now, the text module does have bottom margin. We're going to make that zero. Um, okay, cool. Now we're going to want to center it, of course. So I forgot to do that. So let's go to design. We'll go to text and we'll make sure that it is centered. And we're also going to get away from that gray color. But first, let's style the first column that we've got going on here. Actually, let's start with the section. Um, let's go and put in a background. Now, if we look over here, it's got this like wavy pattern and you know, I don't hate that. We can do something like that. That's fine. And we will just go to the patterns and we will go select a pattern and you know, polka dots, whatever floats your boat. Um, we have our wavy pattern here. And then we can of course also go with what's the pattern size. Well, we can say stretch to full and make it really massive. We can go with a custom size. We can just say cover. You can, you know, reach all sorts of effects. I think this one is the one that we'll go with. And of course, this will kind of spread out as we add things to the page. 
we're going to give the pattern a color of orange, but maybe we'll give it like a like a soft orange like that one there. And then, oh, I should not have exited yet. Uh, we'll also give it a background color here. So we're just going to do a normal color. We're going to go with our orange again, and we are going to bring down that opacity quite a bit just to give it like a hue of that. Okay. Uh, maybe yellow? I don't know. Again, <laughs> you'll hear this a lot from me. This ain't no design course. Um, okay, so there we go. That is just to kind of show that. Now, next thing that we're going to want to do here is maybe give it on the individual first column a color and a background and a border. So let's do that. We're going to go here to the row settings. We'll go to the first column. And let's start with a background that's just white. And now you can kind of see it's getting cut out here, um, which is exactly what we want. And you know the, the number is kind of in the middle. That's perfect. Um, cool. So let's go back to patterns here and let's give it something funky. And now we can maybe use the polka dots. That's fine. We will also now kind of play with the colors again. Let's make it some light blue polka dots. Bring it down a bit. There we go. And then we'll just give that area background color that is not white. And we'll just go stick with a harder yellow on this one. But also bring down the opacity maybe to about 80%. There we go. That doesn't look the best, but again, the design class, right? Okay, so I need to add a border still. Um, I need to just make sure that I'm on my column. We'll go to design, we'll go to border, and we're not gonna round the border much, but we'll probably put a border of about 15 pixels and make that white, kind of makes it stand out. And then lastly, what I'd like to do here is add a little bit of box shadow here that will just lift it off the page a bit, which I think looks a little bit better. Cool, so next target. And we're going to be playing with the, the settings on this again in a second, but I want to move on and get the design on the page, and then we'll take care of the rest. Um, so our number, we are going to make the color of that text white. And that doesn't look too bad. And we'll also just give it a bit of shadow here. Maybe this one. No, that one. There we go. Okay, so now we got the 4, and now we need to do the 04. So Two ways to do this really quickly. We can just go into the row settings and we can delete the other columns and then bam, copy it. So there are more columns. That was quite easy, right? And then we just go change the relevant settings here. So I will go into the first column and then for the background on this one, maybe we'll make it orange. Also just bring that down to about 80%. Oops. There we go. And then we could also, and you know, let's take a look at what they did here. They also seem to be using masks on there as well. So why not throw in a mask here and there? And let's eliminate the pattern on this one. So we'll go in here, we'll delete the pattern, and then we'll go for background mask. And let's find something that's appropriate here, maybe that one. And we can, of course, go ahead and rotate that pattern to be in any direction we'd like it to be. And you can change kind of the, the stretch full and all that fun stuff. We're not gonna do that right now, but you can change the actual color of it. So let's make that red and it's got that other background coming through. So if we come over here, we can delete that color or you can leave it in. That's gonna be entirely up to you. Maybe you wanna use white. It's really up to you. <laughs> Now I removed the color here, but of course you can go and switch it around with whatever you choose to. These two colors will of course work differently. Um, you can even go here to the mask settings and you can invert what you see here by hitting this button. And then you see that the colors kind of flip around on you. Um, so let's go back to the background. And I think what we'll do is purple is obviously a horrible choice for that. We're just gonna keep it on the white. This is just to kind of like demonstrate yet again. And then, of course, we are going to go to the text module. Let's save that out real quick. And for the text module, this is going to be, of course, O. 
and then we'll quickly tackle that last column. It already has the four in there, so we're happy with that. We just need to make it a little bit stylized. So let's go with green here, just to kind of emphasize the fact that we can do different things. We can go and delete that pattern yet again, and maybe we'll use another mask this time, and let's see what we got here. Uh, maybe these honeycomb things um and then you know you can change it to have different types of positioning you can set it to cover fit this is really a lot of different options fit obviously yeah, you can see that it kind of breaks it so i'm going to go with cover on this one and maybe we'll even add a pattern to this one as well so let's go back to the patterns let's select something stripey and then you can kind of see a stripey texture coming out over that and you can make it even stronger if you'd like to. I'm going to keep it kind of faint. I like that. And as a background color, let's go with the beautiful orange hue. Oh, that's the wrong one. I'm, of course, now on my row settings. Reset that and go back to the column. On the background, if you pull this down, oh, you see it changes the actual mask color. So, what you want to do is you want to come over here and want to invert the mask, and you kind of see how that changes things around now. And I actually like that. So I'm gonna keep it at that. And there we go. Now I told you that we're gonna come back and work with these. So let's do that really quickly. We are gonna want them to be a little bit closer to each other. So one of the things we'll do is we're gonna go to the spacing, or not spacing, sorry, sizing. We're gonna change the gutter, and we're gonna make that zero, firstly and that kind of puts them closer to each other. And that, that is kind of what we want here. And now what we'll do is, now, now it's kind of a more interesting thing. So now we're gonna play with the positioning settings here. So we go into the settings for the first column and we are gonna go to transform. And here you can kind of translate it on either the X or the Y axis. So if I translate it here on the X, you can kind of see how it's moving, but you see that this has a linked setting there. So just unlink that if you don't want them to move together and you can kind of move it underneath that one over there. Now, additionally, I'm gonna give it a little bit of rotation so I can go like this. And how many degrees is that? Let's, let's double check. It's, let, let's make it just 350 degrees. There we go. And we are gonna save the setting for that one. And I'm gonna to go to my second column. Now I'm not gonna rotate this one, but I am going to translate it on the Y axis. So I can come back here to translate. I am going to unlink these. I'm just gonna scooch it up a little bit. Like that. That is working for me. And then lastly, we're gonna to go to the last column and we are going to transform it. We are going to translate it to go on the X axis here again, and I just really need to quickly double check and see how much I scooched it up in this one, transform, and on this one, I moved it up 37 pixels. So I'll do negative 37 on that last column. So let's go design, transform, translate, unlink, and we'll say negative 37. And you can see how it kind of comes over We'll give it that rotation of, we're gonna take it down. Oh, no, we're gonna put it up 10 degrees. There we go. And now we've got kind of a new effect that we created here, um, as opposed to the one that they have here. And maybe it's more interesting. Now you can see here that the Z index here is making some funky things. We want that middle card to be at the top. So the way that we'll do that is go explicitly give each of these a Z index. So let's go to advanced. Oh, actually, first first column, advanced, and we're gonna go to the position. And here you've got a Z index value, and you can see that the first column is a Z index value of two. That's okay. Let's go to the second column, and we'll take a look at the position. Got a Z index of two. Now this one is the one you wanna change. You wanna set this to a higher Z index than the others. Now you push it up, and you can kind of see how when I reach 10 and went above the other two. And that's what you want. And there you go. Now you've got it there beautifully 
sitting above the others. So now we can move on and we can add this second line of text down here, error 404, page not found. So simply just add another column, add another text module, and then we'll say error. I can spell 404, page not found. And we will go ahead and we will center our text and then make some more changes here. So centering it, moving that out of the way. Let's go increase that text size quite a bit. There we are, maybe 58. Yeah, that works for me. That's kind of like the same size that they've got going on over there. And white doesn't really do the job here, but guess what? If we probably add some shadow to it, stands out a little bit more, or maybe we just need to change that background color. We could even go with black. That's fine by me for now. So yeah, that's really it. And the last thing were those two buttons, if I recall. Yeah, we've got a button for take me home and then start shopping. So let's go add that on in. So we'll add another two column row. We're gonna add a button module on the first one. And you can kind of see how the alignment's not how it was in the example. So we'll just say, and then you can go ahead and just put a forward slash. That'll take you to the root URL of your website. And what we're going to want to do, you can go ahead and style this however you want. I'm not going to waste time doing that. Let's show that we align it to the right hand side. And then we'll go ahead and add another button. And this one we will say, there you go. And this one, of course, by default will be aligned to the left. But let's just make that explicit here by clicking that button. And that's going to be that. Now, another thing we're going to want to do here is let's just say the design is going to have some spacing at the top and the bottom of another 50 pic. Oh, that's 500 pixels. That's way too much. Um, 150 pixels at the top, 150 pixels at the bottom. That kind of fills the screen a little bit more, gives it a little bit more breathing room. And just another thing to mention here, maybe you want to give less space in between these two. You can just go to design, sizing. And then you can go put a custom gutter and you can put it less or you can put it more, of course. Let's see. Wonderful. Guys, so with that, let's go test this out on the front end. We'll save our page and let's try a URL here we know does not exist. And what we'll say Divi Engine. Oh, I think that might not have saved. Let's just double check that one more time. Okay, yeah. The double save, the infamous double save. Don't forget to double save. You need to save over here as well. Slips my mind. There you go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just type in any old URL here, Divi Engine. And there you go, guys. A beautiful 404 page. You know that already. And it wasn't that hard. It didn't take us that long to build this out. I think that is going to work beautifully. And at least it taught you those skills to build these things out. And I'll make sure to link this other template that I sort of loosely based it on so that you can go download that and play with that if you want to. But now you know how it works and that's the important bit here. There you go, guys, that's that. This is how you utilize the theme builder to build out a 404 page, which is essential for users that get lost. Maybe click on a link that doesn't exist anymore, or maybe they just had clumsy fingers and typed something incorrectly. You learned a lot of good stuff here today definitely go apply it to your client sites. It's just one of those small value ads that sometimes can be easy to forget about. And that is that 404 page. So guys, definitely, if you haven't watched the other installments of the series, check it out. Like, subscribe to the channel. We love being here. So with that, this has been Roby with the Divi Engine team. Thank you for being here and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.